the economy will go into recession. The problem here is that when you get an economy running into recession, um, Keynesian economics says that government's got to step in and increase the deficit in order to support the economy. Yeah, but they're already at 130% to GDP and the foreigners are already backing off uh, buying more debt. So this is a real crisis. And it's just amazing that so few people seem to, and particularly the politicians, seem to have absolutely no idea that this is a problem. And markets continue blithely along in their own course without even thinking about this. The West is in a debt trap and is heading for an imminent debt crisis that could very well be the end of the entire debt-based fiat monetary system. This is the latest warning from renowned metals analyst Alastair MacLeod, who started his career as a stockbroker decades ago and currently serves as the head of research at Gold Money. In a recent discussion with Liberty and Finance, McLeod discusses how the U.S. Federal Reserve's sudden pivot, according to Chairman Jerome Powell recent Jackson Hole speech, is a critical sign of what lies ahead for the U.S. economy and the global economy as a whole. McLeod warns that Powell's sudden dovish sentiment is a huge red flag and proof that unlike Powell, Yellen and others will have us believe all is not well with the U.S. economy. McLeod believes the Fed is now suddenly throwing in the flag in its inflation battle because officials realize that the warning signs we've been getting, such as the recent triggering of the SAM rule, show clearly that the economy is heading for an imminent recession. McLeod warns that this recession will be 100% magnified by the fact that investors, particularly those abroad, are losing confidence in the capability of the US government to repay its debt and service its obligations without plunging the entire global economy into a financial apocalypse. McLeod argues that this is why countries like China and Saudi Arabia are dumping the US dollar and treasuries are loading up on gold, one of the few assets that is not at the same time someone else's liability. We will present clips from Alastair McLeod's interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and supports our growth. We appreciate the support and hope you enjoy the video. The level of uh, US government debt is roughly 130% of GDP. Now to put that in context, it has been climbing to that level in peacetime. If you look at World War II, the most it ever got up to was 119%. In other words, the debt today is greater than it was with the war economy um, in uh, 1946. Now, that is extremely important. Um, the reason it's a debt trap, uh, a debt trap occurs when uh, the uh, growth in your income, and it doesn't matter whether it's a government or individuals or a company, when the growth of income is less than the growth of debt, and obviously the growth of debt includes the interest which is being rolled up, now, that is now the situation again. We had this during the uh, great financial crisis, but, you know, when Lehman went bust. We had it in COVID, obviously. Um, and we were just sort of getting a, our heads above water, or at least America was getting its head above water in, in terms of the debt trap, before we then started um, going down into that situation where income was not exceeding, if you like, the growth in debt. The growth in income was not exceeding the growth in debt. So, uh, and the reason for that basically is you've got to slow down in the US economy. Um, you've also got inflation. Um, and one way or another, um, the foreigners aren't really buying your debt. I mean, we've got China is not buying for uh, her reasons and nor is Japan. So the foreign involvement in acquiring debt, while since I suppose the Lehman crisis, um, their holdings in US treasuries have doubled. In fact, um, the percentage of publicly held debt in foreign ownership has actually fallen from just under 50% to just under 30%. So they're just not participating in the growth of your debt. We're now talking about a situation where um, foreigners um, are going to get less, if you like, in return for lending money to the US government because interest rates will be lowered. And this was clearly signaled 
um, at Jackson Hole by uh, uh, Jay Powell. And I, thought, I think that's, that is a huge, huge mistake. And already we can see the effect on the dollar. The dollar has entered on, on a chart, something called the death cross, where the price is below the 55-day moving average and the 55-day moving average is crossed below the uh, 250-day moving average. All these, um, you know, the price and average is all declining. That is a death cross. It's a very, very bearish signal. And you can understand why. And you know, so, I mean, the other side of it, of course, is gold. And this is why gold is going so well. I mean, under, under the gold price, you have um, a golden cross, which is the reverse of the death cross. So, you know, you, you sell dollars, buy gold. I mean, it's actually as simple as that. But returning to the debt problem, um, this means that the debt is going to grow to the point where it just basically becomes um, impossible to fund. And the only way in which it can be funded is for interest rates to rise substantially and at the same time for the government to cut its spending and to ensure that its budget is bal in balance. Now, here we are ahead of um, a presidential election in the presidential election year, and um, there's absolutely no hope of that, that is for sure. There's probably very little hope of it um, if what the two main contenders say about their policies come about. There's absolutely no hope of this happening in the next year or two. According to Alastair McLeod, the US economy is already in a recession or just on the verge of one. The analyst believes the recent triggering of the SAM rule propounded by former Federal Reserve economist Claudia Sam, is just one of the many signs we will see this year and the next before the main crisis begins. The rule states that the US economy is in recession when the three-month moving average of the unemployment rate is 0.5% higher than the lowest three-month moving average of the preceding 12 months. The rule was triggered in July with the less than expected jobs numbers and the sudden rise in unemployment. Though the global stock market reacted violently to the jobs report, with major stock indexes falling sharply around the world, the storm seems to have calmed for now, particularly with the news that the Federal Reserve will soon start cutting rates. But herein lies a major concern for the economy, according to McLeod. The analyst believes the pivot is coming too soon and could be very disastrous for the US and global economy at large. Let's get back to the video. The dollar has been, um the world's reserve currency for so long, the assumption in America is everybody needs the dollar. They will keep on buying the dollar. They must keep on buying the dollar because they need it for trade. They need it to go and buy commodities, whatever, whatever. But actually, if you look at what's happening, the world is moving away from the dollar. And the people in America are the last to understand this. And I have to say that Whenever you get a currency crisis, it is always the foreigners first who actually understand what's going on because they don't need to hold a foreign currency. They will be the first to sell it. And then at some later stage, the domestic users of the currency begin to realize that it's the currency going down, not prices rising. And that brings me on to another element of this, and that is inflation. The idea of inflation, as, as put about by the, the um, uh, establishment and by the press, is rising prices, which can be controlled. I mean, the latest one is, uh, um, you know, uh, Ms. Harris saying that, uh, you know, Prowse gouging and all the rest of it, we'll stop it. So we'll, we'll do, do what Diocletian did. Not that she's ever heard of Diocletian, I'm sure. And that is, uh, you know, um, put price controls on. It doesn't work. It never works. But the point about this is that the driver of inflation is actually budget deficit and consumer borrowing um, to fund consumption. Those are the things that drive up prices or, if you like, put the other way around and more accurately, drive down the purchasing power of the currency. And that is exactly the situation we still have. And it's going to get worse, particularly from the government end. And when you look at uh, consumer behavior, savings in America have collapsed. They're, they've gone negative. So, you know, this is, this is a disaster for the economy where you have got a combination of a debt problem. You have got, um, a, you know, a nasty recession, potentially a nasty recession, and I would actually call it a slump. 
in the early stages of development. And on top of that, rising prices or a loss of purchasing power in the currency. This is the worst possible stagflationary scenario. Now, we had this back in 1976. And in 1975, actually, sterling collapsed against the dollar. It went down to around about, I think, a um, dollar ten, you know, roughly where it got to in recent history, um, maybe even a bit lower than that. America um, came in and loaned us money in order to save the currency, which was fine. But obviously, the condition was that the IMF come in, the IMF repays America, the IMF puts in uh, uh, um, controls, requirements and all the rest of it, uh, which takes it away from the politicians. And this is exactly what happened. The IMF said, right, you've got to balance your budget. Um, don't care. You raise your taxes, however you do it. But you've got to have a balanced budget. Um, and uh, in order to fund um, the situation, interest rates rose to the point where we had three bond issues of 15, 15 and a quarter and 15 and a half percent. Now, the problem that America faces is that there isn't someone like the IMF to come along and rescue them. I mean, it's just not there <laughs> because apart from anything else, you own the IMF. I mean, figuratively speaking, the IMF um, might account in SDRs, but basically it's a, it's a dollar based organization and it's not in a position to rescue the dollar. So you've got um, you you have a situation which is worse than we are. We had potentially in 1976 when we were funding at 15 and a half percent coupons. Just imagine what that does to the U.S. economy. Vice President Kamala Harris's proposals of federal ban on price gouging, which she noticeably mispronounced as price gauging, has been making headlines since she made the promise while campaigning in Raleigh, North Carolina, earlier this month. Only a few people, almost no financial expert at all, have applauded Harris' statements about price control, a tool that has repeatedly failed to properly bring down prices all through history. The only thing that can stop inflation is a serious check on government borrowing and spending. But no American politician, not the Republicans, and definitely not the Democrats, has the wherewithal to do what is actually needed to save Americans from this massive debt spiral they all created. This is why experts like McLeod believe the only way forward is a default leading to a sovereign debt crisis that will wipe off everything and allow us to restart the financial system, this time with tangible assets like gold and silver instead of easily inflated fiat currencies. Please share your thoughts on Alastair McLeod's interview in the comments section below. If you are yet to do so, also ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.